Hi Year 6 and welcome back to our guided reading and today we're going to be continuing to read the chapter and then at the end you're going to have an activity. That'll be the end of our poor beasts, said Thorin. Nothing can escape Smorg once he sees it. Here we are and here we shall have to stay unless any of fancies trampling the long open miles back to the river with Smorg on the watch. It was not a pleasant thought. They crept further down the tunnel, and there they lay and shivered though it was warm and stuffy, until dawn came pale through the crack of the door. Every now and again through the night they could hear the roar of the flying dragon grow and then pass and fade, as he hunted round and round the mountainsides. He guessed from the ponies, and from the traces of the camps he had discovered, that men had come up from the river and the lake and had scaled the mountainside from the valley where the ponies had been standing. But the door withstood his searching eye, and the little high ward bay had kept out his fiercest flames. Long he had hunted in vain till the dawn chilled his wrath, and he went back to his golden couch to sleep, and to gather new strength. He would not forget or forgive the theft, not if a thousand years turned him to a smouldering stone, but he could afford to wait. Slow and silent he crept back to his lair, and half closed his eyes. When morning came, the terror of the dwarves grew less. They realised the danger of this kind were inevitable in dealing with such a guardian, and that it was no good giving up their quest yet. Nor could they get away just now, as Thorin had pointed out. Their ponies were lost or killed, and they would have to wait some time before Smorg relaxed his watch sufficiently for them to dare the long way back on foot. Luckily they had saved enough of their stores to last them still for some time. They debated long on what has to be done, but they could not think of no way of getting rid of Smorg which has always been a weak point in their plans, as Bilbo felt inclined to point out. Then, as is the nature to folk that are thoroughly perplexed, they began to grumble at the Hobbit, blaming him for what had first so pleased them, for bringing away a cup and stirring up Smorg's wrath so soon. What else do you suppose a burglar to do? asked Bilbo angrily. I was not engaged to kill dragons, that's warrior's work, but to steal treasure. I made the best beginning I could, did you expect me to trot back with a whole horde of thraw on my back? If there is any grumbling to be done, I think I might have a say. You ought to have bought 500 burglars, not one. I'm sure it reflects great credit on your grandfather, but you cannot pretend that you ever made the vast extent of his wealth clear to me. I should want hundreds of years to bring it all up, if I was 50 times as big and smog as tame as a rabbit. After that, of course, the dwarves begged his pardon. What then do you suppose we do, Mr Baggins? asked Thorin politely. I have no idea at the moment, if you mean about removing the treasure. That obviously depends entirely on some new turn of luck and the getting rid of smog. Getting rid of dragons is not an all in my line, but I'll do my best to think about it. Personally, I have no hope at all and I wish I was safe back at home. Never mind that for the moment. What are we to do now? Today? Well, if you really want my advice... I should say that we can do nothing but stay where we are. By day we can no doubt creep out safely enough to take the air. Perhaps long enough, one or two could be chosen to go back to the store by the river and replenish our supplies. But in the meanwhile, everyone ought to be well inside the tunnel by night. Now I'll make you an offer. I've got my ring and will creep down this very noon. Then, if ever small ought to be napping and see what he's up to. Perhaps something will turn up. Every worm has his weak spot as my father used to say, though I'm not sure it was not from personal experience. Naturally, the dwarves accepted the offer eagerly. Already they had come to respect little Bilbo. Now he had become the real leader in their adventure. He had begun to have ideas and plans of his own. When midday came, he got ready for another journey down into the mountain. He did not like it, of course, but it was not so bad now he knew, more or less, what was in front of him. Had he known more about dragons and their wily ways, he might have been more frightened and less hopeful of catching this one napping. The sun was shining when he started, but it was as dark as night in the tunnel. The light from the door, almost closed, soon faded as he went down. So silent was his going that smoke on a gentle wind could hardly have surpassed it, and he was inclined to feel a bit proud of himself as he drew near the lower door. There was only the very faintest glow to be seen. Old Smog is weary and asleep, he thought. He can't see me and he won't hear me. Cheer up, Bilbo. He had forgotten or never heard about Dragon's sense of smell. It is also an awkward fact that they keep an, uh, half an eye open, watching while they sleep, if they are suspicious. Smog certainly looked fast asleep, 
almost dead and dark, with scarcely a snore more than a whiff of unseen steam, when Bilbo peeped once more from the entrance. He was just about to step out on the floor when he caught a sudden thin and piercing ray of red from under the drooping lid of Smog's left eye. He was only pretending to be asleep. He was watching the tunnel entrance. Hurriedly, Bilbo stepped back and blessed the luck of his ring. Then Smog spoke. Well, thief, I smell you and I feel your air. I hear your breath. Come along. Help yourself again. There is plenty to spare. But Bilbo was not quite so unlearned in dragon lore as that, and if Smorg hoped to get him to come nearer so easily, he was disappointed. No, thank you, O Smorg the Tremendous, he replied. I did not come for presents. I only wished to have a look at you and see if you are truly as great as tales say. I did not believe them. Do you now? said the dragon, somewhat flattered, even though he did not believe a word of it. Truly songs and tales fall utterly short of the reality, O Smorg, the chiefest and greatest of calamities, replied Bilbo. You have nice manners for a thief and a liar, said the dragon. You seem unfamiliar you seem familiar with my name, but I don't seem to remember smelling you before. Who are you and where do you come from? may I ask. You may indeed. I come from under the hill, and under the hills and over the hills my past led, and through the air. I am he that walks unseen. So I can believe, said Smorg, but that is hardly your usual name. I am Clue Finder, the Web Cutter, the Stinging Fly. I was chosen for the lucky number. Lovely titles, sneered the dragon, but lucky numbers don't always come off. I'm he that buries his friends alive and drowns them and draws them alive again from the water. I came from the end of a bag, but no bag went over me. Well, that doesn't sound creditable, creditable, scoffed the dragon. I am the friend of bears and the guest of eagles. I am ring winner and luck wearer and I am barrel rider, went on Bilbo, beginning to be, be pleased with his riddling. That's better, said Smog, but don't let your imagine run away with you. This, of course, was the way to talk to dragons, if you don't want to reveal your proper name, which is wise, and don't want to infuriate them by a flat refusal which is also very wise. No dragon can resist the fascination of riddling talk and of wasting time trying to understand it. There was a lot here which Smorg did not understand at all, though I expect you do, since you know all about Bilbo's adventures to which he's referring. But he thought he understood enough, and he chuckled inside, wicked inside. I thought so last night, he smiled to himself. Lake men, some nasty scheme of those miserable tub-trading lake men, or I'm a lizard. I haven't been down there for an age and an age, but I will soon after that. Very well, old Barrel Rider, he said again. Maybe Barrel was your pony's name, and maybe not, though it was fat enough. You may walk unseen, but you did not walk all the way. Let me tell you, I ate six ponies last night, and I shall catch and eat all the others before long. In return for the excellent meal, I'll give you one piece of advice for your good. Don't have more to do with dwarves than you can help. Dwarves? said Bilbo in pretended surprise. Don't talk to me, said Smog. I know the smell of dwarf, no one better. Don't tell me that I can eat a dwarf-ridden pony and not know it. You'll come to a bad end if you go with such friends, thief barrel rider. I don't mind if you go back and tell them so for me. But he did not tell Bilbo that there was one smell he could not make out at all hobbit smell. It was quite outside his experience and puzzled him mightily. I suppose you got a fair price for the cup last night, he went on. Come now, did you? Nothing at all. Well, that's just like them. And I suppose they are skulking outside and your job is to do all the dangerous work and get what you can when I'm not looking for them. And you will get your fair share. Don't you believe it? If you get off alive, you'll be lucky. Bilbo was now beginning to feel really uncomfortable. Whenever Smorg's roving eyes seeking for him in the shadows flashed across him, he trembled, and an unaccountable desire seized him, hold of him to rush out and reveal himself and tell all the truth to Smorg. In fact, he was in grievous danger of coming under the dragon spell. But plucking up courage, he spoke again. You don't know everything, O Smorg the Mighty, said he. Not gold alone brought us hither. 
Ha ha, you admit us, laughed Smog. Why not say us 14 and be done with it, Mr. Lucky Number? I'm pleased to hear that you had other business in these hard parts beside my gold. In that case, you may, perhaps, not altogether waste your time. I don't know if it's occurred to you that, even if you could steal the gold bit by bit, a matter of a hundred years or so, you could not get very far, not much use on the mountainside, not much use in the forest, bless me. Had you never thought of the catch? A fourteenth share, I suppose, or something like that. Those were the terms, eh? But what about delivery? What about cartage? What about armed guards and tolls? And Smog laughed aloud. He had a wicked and wily heart, and he knew his guesses were not far out, though he suspected that Lakemen were at the back of the plans, and that most of the plunder was meant to stop there in the town by the shore that in his younger days had been called Esgaroth. You will hardly believe it, but poor Bilbo is really taken very aback. So far, all his thoughts and energies have been concentrated on getting to the mountain and finding the entrance. He had never bothered to wonder how the treasure was to be removed, certainly never how any part of that might fall to his share was to be brought back up the way to Bag End under hill. Now a nasty suspicion began to grow in his mind. Had the dwarves forgotten this important point too, or were they laughing in their sleeves at him all the time? That is the effect that dragging talk has on the inexperienced. Bilbo, of course, ought to have been on his guard, but Smog had rather an overwhelming personality. I tell you, he said in an effort to remain loyal to his friends and to keep his end up, the gold was only an art of the thought with us. We came over hill and under hill by wave and wind for revenge. Surely, old Smog, the unassessably wealthy, you must realise that your success has made you some bitter enemies. Then Smog really did laugh. A devastating sound which shook Bilbo to the floor, while far up in the tunnel the dwells huddled together and, the mar and imagined the hobbit had come to some nasty end. Revenge! he snorted, and the light of his eyes lit the hall from floor to ceiling like scarlet lightning. Revenge! The king under mountain is dead, and those his kin that dare seek revenge? Girion, lord of Dale, is dead, and I have eaten his people like a wolf among sheep. And where are his sons' sons that dare approach me? I kill where I wish, and none dare resist. I laid low the warriors of old, and their like is not in the world today. Then I was young and tender. Now I am old and strong, thief in the shadows, he gloated. My armour is like tenfold shield. My teeth are swords, my claws spears. The shock of my tail a thunderbolt. My wings a hurricane, and my breath death. I've always understood, said Bilbo in a frightened squeak. The dragons were softer underneath, especially in the region of the chest. But doubtless one so fortified has thought of that. The dragon stopped short in his boasting. Your information is antiquated, he snapped. I am armoured above and below with iron scales and hard gems. No blade can pierce me. I might have guessed it, said Bilbo. Truly there could be no equal of Lord Smorg the impenetrable. What magnificence to possess a waistcoat of fine diamonds. Yes, it is rare and wonderful indeed, said Smorg, absurdly pleased. He did not know that the hobbit had already caught a glimpse of his peculiar undercovering on his previous visit and was itching for a closer view for reasons of his own. The dragon rolled over. Look, he said, what do you say to that? Dazzling, marvellous, perfect, flawless, staggering, exclaimed Bilbo aloud. But really what he thought inside was... Old fool, why there's a large patch in the hollow of his left chest, as bare as a snail out of its shell. After he'd seen that, Mr Baggins' one idea was to get away. Well, I really must not detain your magnificence any longer, he said, or keep you from much-needed rest. Ponies take some catching, I believe, after a long start. And so do burglars, he added, as a parting shot, as he darted back and fled up the tunnel. It was an unfortunate remark, for the dragon spouted terrific flames after him, and fast though he sped up the slope, he had not gone far enough to be comfortable before the ghastly head of Smorg was thrust against the opening behind. Luckily, the whole head and jaws could not squeeze in, but the nostrils sent forth fire and vapour to pursue him, and he was nearly overcome, and stumbled blindly on in great pain and fear. He had been feeling rather pleased with the cleverness of his conversation with Smorg, but his mistake at the end shook him into better sense. Never laugh at live dragons, Bilbo, you fool, he said to himself, and it became a favourite saying of his later, 
and passed with into proverb. You aren't nearly through this adventure yet, he added. And that was pretty well and true. OK, we're going to stop there. And now you need to go away and you need to complete the following task. As you can see, the Hobbit uses some really wonderful metaphors to refer to himself when he is riddling with Smog. Because he's trying for Smog not to understand who he is. And he uses some really wonderful and different metaphors. And here he says, barrel rider, ring winner, luck wearer. He calls himself web cutter for when he fought the spiders. Barrel rider, when he got the dwarves out of um, out of the elven palace through the barrels. He calls himself ring winner when he found the ring with Gollum. And luck wearer is another name for when he wears his ring. I want you to think about Bilbo's adventures so far. And think about if you could come up with some wonderful metaphors for Bilbo. What you need to do is you need to... You need to list some appropriate metaphors for Bilbo during his adventure. So you need to think about how, what you might be able to call Bilbo and use some really good descriptive names. For example, Barrel Rider or Ring Winner or Web Cutter. And these are all metaphors for Bilbo, aren't they? So you need to go away now and think about his adventures. And what, what could you, you could call him Eagle Rider, for example. And that would be a really good uh, uh, name to call Bilbo because he did ride the eagle. So you need to come up and think of some names or appropriate me metaphors to call Bilbo for his adventure. As you can see, some of the ones here have a hyphen. And can you include one with a hyphen? Can you include a metaphor with a hyphen in as well? Good luck and remember to post your work to Dojo.